Have you ever had one of those days where you're sitting there thinking and all of a sudden you realize you have a million questions running through your head at once? Maybe you're sitting at home or taking the train to work, or maybe you're already at work. Most of the time, the things running through people's minds are simple questions like, what should I wear today? Did I remember to lock the door when I left the house this morning? I wonder what the temperature is like outside. But have you ever been sitting at home watching TV and the next thing you know the Discovery Channel is on and going into great depth about some crazy kind of species? You look at your TV and just think, wow, that octopus is enormous. Maybe it gets you thinking about the diversity within our world and wondering about all the different organisms that inhabit it. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that when I see something unique and different, it catches my eye right away. That's why after watching a video on cephalopods, I was immediately drawn in by their body coloration and all the ways they used it to their advantage. I mean, look at this fascinating creature and all the different colors it can impersonate. So before I go into more detail about the body coloration and bioluminescence this class of organism possess, let me first tell you a little bit about the cephalopods in general. The cephalopods belong to the phylum Mollusca and include octopuses, squid, cuttlefish, and nautilus. These organisms are known to be the most complex groups of mollusks. The mollusks in general are aquatic organisms who have inhabited Earth for over 500 million years. With over 90,000 living species and 70,000 fossils, it's clear that this phylum is quite diverse. Cephalopods being the most complex type of mollusk, possess a closed circulatory system and increased metabolism in order to keep up with their increased range of motion compared to all the other classes of mollusks. We will begin our examination of cephalopods by first looking at what allows them to be able to change colors. The cephalopods possess three elements that help them display a diverse range of body coloration. The main structure they use for displaying bo different body patterns is their chromatophores. These structures lie beneath the galactic epidermis and are responsible for producing the red, yellow, orange, and brown colors within the skin of the cephalopod. Beneath the chromatophores are multi-layer stacks of thin chitin platelet known as iridophores. These produce colors by constructive interference and are responsible for giving the blue and green coloring seen in many species of cephalopods. These structures are also found in different arrangements in photophores, which are structures responsible for bioluminescence. Within the photophores, there are three types of iridophores, which are responsible for collimating, transmitting, and reflecting light produced in the photophores. The final element that helps give cephalopods, their wide range of coloration is the leucophores, which are located beneath their iridophores. These structures are broadband reflectors and reflect incident light across the entire visible spectrum when the chromatophores are refracted. All three of the structural elements work together with one another to produce the overall coloration seen in these species. This video of a squid skin clearly highlights all of the structural elements working together as you can clearly see the contracted chromatophores and the blue-green coloration of their iridophores. Despite the fact that most of the cephalopods possess these three structural elements, it is important to note that there are a few species that have unique differences. The octopus vulgaris is one of these unique species as it contains a black pigmentation within its chromatophores. Another unique genus is the lollygunid squids as they lack leucophores. This is a unique trait as it allows these type of squids to be transparent when their chromatophores are retracted. It is also important to note that not all cephalopods are bioluminescent organisms. However, it does not affect their ability to camouflage. It tends to only be the deep sea squids that are bioluminescent. Overall, these three elements involved in body coloration and bioluminescence of the cephalopods are what allow them to possess specific traits advantageous to their survival. These structural elements not only allow for camouflage from predators, but they also allow for communication and capturing of prey. Let's first look at how they help with communication. Cephalopods use their body coloration for two different modes of communication, courtship and aggression. The use of body coloration during courtship is only observed in males as they display a black and white striped body pattern known as the intense zebra. When this pattern is intensified, it is the male's way of showing off to the females. It also serves as a warning to other males to stay away. The absence of this pattern on the fourth arm of the cephalopods is an indication that the individual is a female. Overall, the structural elements involved in producing the different body colorations are used for both mating as well as sexual determination. 
On the other hand, the body pattern can also be used to display aggression. This is often observed in male-male interactions as they battle with one another to fight each other off. This is typically observed when a male is guarding a female. Although these different coloration patterns can be used as a signal, they can also be used to aid in capturing prey. There are three basic body pattern types that a cephalopod takes on, uniform, modile, and destructive. In all three of these patterns, there is a great variation in the different colorations that can be seen. Uniform body pattern can be described as being small, dark and light spots dispersed evenly across the body. Modal body pattern is similar to the uniform pattern, however, it is slightly more a regular arrangement of the similarly patched shape. The disruptive body pattern is linked like the other two body patterns as it tends to break up the appearance of the individual as it mimics large scale, dark and light components of multiple shapes. Despite the differences seen amongst these patterns, all three are evoked by visual cues within the environment. The type of body pattern being betrayed is based upon the sizes and contrasts of the objects in the background that is being mimicked. For instance, camouflaging with the sand of the ocean floor is a lot different than blending with the coral reef. These different visual cues were shown by Hanlon and his colleagues in experiments they ran on artificial substrates. As you can see in this experiment, evoking one of the body patterns takes into account the contrast of the checkers as well as the size of the checkers. The images obtained from this experiment show that destructive body pattern, which can be seen here, is induced by high contrast and large checker size. On the other hand, the uniform body pattern, which can be seen here, is induced by low contrast. Finally, modile body pattern seems to be the intermediate of the two as it is induced by high to medium contrast with small to medium checker sizes. This pattern can be observed in the remainder of the experiments seen here. Overall, this experiment gave great supporting evidence to the fact that there are three basic body patterns observed in cephalopods and that these patterns are evoked by the changes in the background that is being copied. The importance of these body patterns is that they are used by the species to allow them to camouflage into their surroundings, not only to avoid predators, but also to sneak up on prey. One other method that they can use for this purpose is called a masquerade. This term simply means that the individual takes on the appearance of one of the substrates rather than being camouflaged into the background. For instance, in this video, the octopus can be seen mimicking what looks like a type of aquatic plant being swept along the ocean floor. If these camouflage tricks don't work to allow the cephalopods to sneak up on their prey, they may switch to a more aggressive approach by showing themselves to their prey and using what is known as the passing cloud. This wave-like motion of light and dark bands seen in this video is the pat body patterning known as the passing cloud. This mesmerizing pattern is only used in the absence of any potential predators. It is used to distract the prey, making it easier to attack. Since this mode of attack puts the individual in a vulnerable position as easy prey, these tactics are used with caution. If a potential predator is seen lurking close by, the cephalopod quickly reverts back to its well-known disguise of camouflage. One other unique trait that has been observed in multiple experiments is the change of coloration of after the cephalopod seizes its prey. It is observed that right after the individual has obtained food, its body color gives off a dark coloration. Overall, the cephalopods are a very unique group of marine animals. Their beautiful body coloration and bioluminescence, although breathtaking, plays key roles in both their communications with one another and their mechanisms for feeding. For communication, we discuss the intense zebra pattern, which is used by males to find a mate and to warn off other males. For feeding, we looked at the three basic body patterns used for camouflage. We also touched on masquerade technique, and we discussed the role of the passing, passing cloud. Whether it be to impress the girl, sneak up on the prey, or distract their prey with their mesmerizing pattern, it is clear that the cephalopods are a highly advanced group of mollusks.